Welcome back to the Lion Club, everyone. It's been a little while, as usual. Everyone's asking what's happening, but here we are. We've got a new guest today. Old uh, Tom Bridge has come out for a little, uh, a little telltale, little, a little uh, chin waggle. A little something something. A little something something. How you been, Tom? Not bad, but um, better if there was wind. Yeah. But... This... Hasn't been the most successful trip, has it? No, one of the least productive I've been <laughs> on, I think. But we've had a good time. I mean, how long was the session today? 45? Yeah, good, good 45 minutes on the 12, going yeah. downwind. Yeah, a little lo loss of the kite at one point. <laughs> Go grab it. Bit of a swim, you know? Bit of a swim. Fitness. Fitness. And all that. Triathlon, mate. <laughs> out and back, you reckon? Shit, yeah, out and back, mate. You were talking about that before, weren't you? The, the new new kite discipline. What were you, what were you what, saying should happen? the GK event that's going to yeah, be? You, oh. you, think, you think they should just start mixing a few more things together, you were it's saying? the ultimate athlete, mate. Yeah? That's what you've got to realise, I mean. Quick, quick, quick jog down the beach. Foil, pump. Pump. Run, pump. Run, pump. pump kite. BJ Sav. Straight the to a wing. I, what, what happened to the slalom in the middle of that? Oh, wow, true. <laughs> Quick slalom. So pump the wing. So many things going Jump on. off a of dune. Imagine. You're right. Survivor. GKA survivor. The ultimate athlete. The ultimate kiter. It's like that surfing thing that failed. Yeah, what was that? Did you ever see that, that ultimate surfer thingy? No. It was some rubbish thing. It was shit. It's not worth mentioning. They, uh, yeah, it's not worth mentioning. We just said it failed. And... Well, I suppose we'd be better cut the chat and just get into it. Best ad, yeah. Yeah, kind of mucking around a little bit now. It's what we are, straight to yeah. the point. Yeah. <laughs> the two of us are pretty straight to the point. Yeah, we don't fuck about. No fucking about. Nah, come on. So, uh, how'd you get into it, mate? How'd you learn to kite? What's, what? what's happening? <laughs> oh, God. The kiteboarding, you know? We're oh. here for the kiteboarding. Um... Where'd it start? When I was six, about. Jesus, I can't even remember when I was six. No, I can't. I saw, it's just what I've been told, mate. Yeah? No, I do remember. You do remember? Yeah, a tiny bit. What's your first memory then? What, of kiting? Yeah. Probably when I was about seven and a half on a Cabrina switchblade at the time. Oh, six switchblade. Yeah. Oh shit handles on the side. Three and a half, I think it was. Uh, at home, did a kite loop and landed on the sand. What year do you think that was? Oh, eight or seven? I would have been seven, so it would have been oh eight, yeah. Oh eight, Cabrina Switchblade. So they'd been around like a couple seasons, I think, the Switchblade. It was a nice by then. And it was a, it was a yellow and black bar. It was yellow on one side, black yeah. on the other. You remember I remember. That? Yeah, yeah. And they had the, the fucking weird thing in the middle that went up like that. Oh, you still had the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. two to one pulley deep yeah, power exactly. thing happening. Yeah. Really? Weird. Yeah. They had that on the switchblade. Well, they had it on the bar I was on. I think that was, I have a feeling that was the crossbow bar, but it could have been on the switchblade too. Could have been on it. No, I was definitely on the switchblade. Yeah. Yeah. I'd never seen a three and a half switchblade. Mate, I remember when I got a crispy one at one point. I had a three and a half and a four and a half. Those are my two sizes. <laughs> and I had a crispy three and a half and I was like, over the moon, mate. Pete actually gave it to me. Pete gave it to you? Pete gave it to me. So how'd that happen? I don't know. I remember, Mum was always in touch with everyone because she was kind of in the... In the loop. In the loop. So she, that's how I got into it. She gave us a power kite and yeah. I flew a power kite for like a year. Before I what, went on, like a little stunt yeah, kite kind little, of thing? Yeah, just a, you know, an old flexifoil, whatever they were called. Yeah, those little Ram Air flexifoil yeah, yeah, two-line power kite Red things. on one side, blue on the other. Yeah. Love the thing. Um, I flew that for like a year before I even went on the water. So like by the time I was on the water, I was like, had the... You had the skill, yeah. Had the kite, didn't have to focus on that. So I, all I had to do was ride along, but, which I could never do. I, could, I was always so bad. Really? It was always Guy and Ollie were really good and I was crap. But you were six? You seven. When you tried to go on the water? Seven, seven. when I tried to go okay. on the water. I was six when I got a power kite. 
So you were six, you got the power kite, flew it on the beach for a year. And then, then you got the switchblade three and a half. Uh -huh. And we learned, I learned in the Caribbean off a boat. And the, I remember all I wanted to do was, I remember this, this is probably my first memory. I, all I wanted to do was, I was in this fucking seat harness and I always thought seat harnesses were crap, but what did I know? Uh, I was like, I don't want to get my waist harness and do a beach start. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> the game, like no, okay. Like, you know. He just wanted to launch off the beach. All I wanted into to do a rally off do, the beach, yeah. into the water. I thought that was going to be the easiest thing. Do a beach start and, yeah, just go from there. I couldn't water start. You couldn't get going from the water? No. Nah. Why? Don't know. I just couldn't, f just couldn't work it out. I couldn't, always had the issue of getting the bloody feet in the board and then, like, you know, all that nonsense. Just I all just didn't work together. Couldn't do it. It took me like a good couple, like couple of days to do it, but when like Guy and Ollie, they were just like, just gone. Just went straight away. Yeah, and I was struggles. All I wanted to do was put a waist harness on and do a beach start. How much older are they than you actually? Just like two years in between. Yeah. So what, Guy's like 23 at the moment, and Ollie's 24, 25. Okay, so, so you were seven, then nine. then nine and then eleven. But Ollie had started kiting about two years prior. He had started. He started when he was like nine. Okay. Yeah. So he started quite early on. So do you think like your um, trajectory into kiting was like as quick as theirs, or they were just like quicker? No, I off remember that because me and Guy learned at exactly the same time, and he was way better at the start. Yeah. I literally couldn't ride along. I couldn't do the sport. <laughs> I was so bad at. It. For like the first couple, like for like the first couple of weeks, I just couldn't do it, and then I got my head around it. What do you think, like, made you realize how you how to do it, or like what what like clicked to make you do it? Fuck, not a clue. You so just messed around until just, it worked. Yeah, just like did it, just did it loads. I remember I was like right, just kiting so much, always chucking a kite up, and I always like mum and dad would always like pump the kites and whatnot. And, I never pumped a kite until I was like 13. It was amazing. Yeah, they just yeah. pumped you up? All I ever put are like straps or fins on the board. <laughs> like, that's why when I go away now, I always keep like my board set up. Yeah, you, ca you came here with just your boots on the board in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Strip it out, ready to go. Exactly. But like I never like set up like my board. I always have my kite pumped up. I was like, I'll do the lines. <laughs> that was always the thing. Yeah, I was lucky. But uh, got to bloody pump my own kites now, don't I? So you had the switchblade. Yeah. You got going on that. Uh huh. You were kiting. What happened after that? Like, what's what's the next step? Uh, just jumps. You know, front row, back row, couple railies, in hooked railies, obviously. Was this within like a year or two? Or? Yeah, no, this was in like the first six months. I would okay. have thought. Okay. Like, I was that young that you know it just went like. You just did it. It just went like, yeah, you just did it. And it was like, kite, like tiny little kite loops. Like you thought they were massive, but yeah. obviously they were like two or three meters. Uh, front rows, back rows, railies, all that stuff. And then I probably, at about, I probably rode the switchblade for like a year. Yeah. And then I got my first North Evo, which was in a three. No, it was a four. It was a four meter Evo. I love that kite on this like big bar. And it was the first time, that was probably the first time like, I, I unhooked. Yeah. So I remember those switchblades, I never could unhook. They'd always like backstall and, always do, back something. Store and do something yeah. weird. Um, so the Evo was the first time I unhooked. And then it was like, I never actually remember learning a ready to blind. I think it just happened. I'd always, actually, no, I'd always learn like just like pops to just like doing like little back 180s, little yeah. pops to blind. So like Rayleigh's the blind, S the blind, back mobs, they all came like fairly. That's what I remember doing. I remember just like popping and like riding blind. I like thought that was cool to just go backwards. Mm -hmm. And then I was just, just like that. Yeah, yeah just, just turning and going backwards. Uh -huh. And then same thing. You just, obviously you just do a Rayleigh to blind cause that just feels yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. And like, a, you know, you just pop a front, front free and land wrapped, whatever. What were you, um, what like what direction were you riding when you were doing that? Like to the left or to the right when you were doing that that first stuff? It was both ways. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It always because I always grew up with like I don't know Aaron and Ruben and yeah. Yuri and everyone and and Kevin. They all did stuff like the right the right ways. They did you know Slim's going right, uh -huh. Slim's going left, even Blind Judge Free's going right. Yeah. It was like, you know, they were right-handed. They didn't do any of that. Didn't do it to like, the left. Like, oh, I can't go backside left, so I'll just pass it with my left hand. Yeah. No, they did none of that. They just, you know, did the right tricks the right ways. Yeah. So I guess... You just did the you same. You just did the same. Yeah, and there was so, like, there was a lot of footage coming out in, what was it, 09? Yeah. 08, um, 09? There was a ton of footage coming and out. Yeah, there. and it was all, and there was contests that you could watch, whatever. I remember mum would always go to the racing events... Um, and they usually be at the same places as the freestyle events. So yeah. I remember mingling in that kind of... Yeah, I'm trying to like picture... I, I don't know if I... When I first saw you, but I do remember you being super small. Like when I was having, like 10 or... Having a or super 10. big bar and yeah. having like a four-minute Evo or something. Probably when like, I was nine or ten was probably the first event where I went with mum. And we, like, we'd just be on the beach flying the kite like the whole day playing. I remember the Germany events well. Yeah. Going to those and turning up and playing the uh, table football. The foosball, yeah. Yeah, playing that all day with Alex Pastor just really <laughs> pissing him off. <laughs> um, yeah. That was that was it pretty much. So that's like your first kind of memories of events and stuff was going to yeah. going to those St. Peter Ording events in Germany. Yeah, and, and like any kind just of messing around. Anything that mum went to, she always took us with her. Because she was, was doing all the racing. Exactly. And, and there was a big like, like racing tour. Like it was actually like a viable yeah. thing to do. It was, so it was massive. The, yeah, and the freestyle was and there was like they were worth turning up and it was nice to be there and around people. And I guess without kind of knowing it, but you were making your kind of way in the industry and you started, you know, you didn't know it, obviously, because you were so young. Yeah. But people started knowing you as Steph's kids, I guess. Yeah, you were like so young, you were, wouldn't have been even thinking about any exactly. of getting sponsored or anything no, like no. that at the time. But that was probably like good inroads to just people like knowing who yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly, knowing you. the people. And your brothers were there too and... Exactly. I mean, they were, were they competing then as well or not? Uh, I stage? remember Ollie was always like helping on the boat, do the flags. Yeah. Um, I think it was Sammy. Yeah. He lives, yeah, he lives by nowhere. Yeah. Think. You know? Yeah. Um, and he was always doing the flags on the boat and the race director. So I remember he, he always took Ollie out to do the starts and, yeah, I can... and me and Guy would just chill. I remember that was in Furta. Over at the Rene Agli event. Yeah. Yeah. Where Andy Yates did his knee that on that final, I think it was. I don't remember. I, I, I might not have been on that one. I was, I was there for a lot of them, but I don't think I was there for that one. Oh, no. I, or maybe it was Kevin. It was, it was Andy Yates against Kevin and one of them. One of them hurt themselves. One of them did a knee, yeah. It's terrible. You, good memory. <laughs> Got it all up there. So, um, you were at the events with your mum... Your brothers weren't competing yet, but they were kind of getting into the into yeah. the scene, helping with the racing and everything like that. When when did like your brothers or you actually start competing in the competitions? Then it was those British events that we first did. I remember turning up like I remember I have a memory which is quite vivid. I remember turning up to Swansea like. What's this, the BKSA? Yeah, or? the BKSA back in the day when it was like ages ago, turning up to Swansea. And I remember Aaron being there and uh, oh, he was on Flexifor at the time with those white kites, they're pretty sick. And I was like nine or ten. I was like, do you want to handset that your kite? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, obviously he didn't need a handset. Like <laughs> Just go off for him. To like... No, he didn't want a hand. No, he didn't want a hand, but... I can see why. It's a good, good bloke though, offering. Yeah, a good bloke, aren't hand. I? Pfft, too right. <laughs> um, but those BKSA ones were how I got into competing and just like did a couple of them. I remember there was one in Blackpool. And what, um, it, was a, it was like a junior competition yeah, it was like a junior, in the BKSA? Yeah, they had like men's and women's. Was it under 18 or just like every? They had like a youth's and okay. whoever. There was different little Yeah, categories. it was like under 16, under 14. Yeah. I remember Blackpool, I think mum did a kite loop back roll 
and landed on the beach, ended up like breaking up, I don't know, ribs or some shit. Oh man. Like so like, really gnarly. And like we didn't know about it. Like we just got taken off to like the, the fun park or like the, the water park it was. And I was like, the All right. best afternoon of my life, mate. It's been, like, <laughs> they had water slides that went uphill and like you get like jetted uphill and I did, was oblivious to it. But no, the BKSA ones, yeah. Yeah. And then also there was these events ran in like Saint Pierre Pescador, I think it was. Like there the junior, the, the junior, junior ones, yeah, stuff. the Europeans, and that's like where I met like Noe and Max and you know, yeah, all the people who I hang out with now. So, and were, way, way were you winning? There. Were you winning like these BKSA stops or? Yeah, I was winning. I was winning them. Um, um, in your age, division. in my age division, yeah. yeah. And then I think Ollie was winning here. Some guy wasn't really competing. He wasn't too fast. He was doing a, a bit here and there. Yeah, it would usually be like me and guy in the final. Um, and then Ollie winning like the category above. So you went from that, then you went to these like kind of junior and European yeah. titles, like junior worlds and European world things yeah. that were in Spain, right? Yeah, both. No, one of the first one was in France. So the Europeans were always in France at this horrendous spot. Uh, but it was the first uh, contest that I'd been to with like a that you could that, like you won a bit of prize money. Yeah. So I remember like winning my first Europeans. I don't know what the age category was. What under under twelve, under thirteen. Yeah. And getting three hundred euros, and I was and you were just pumped. <sighs> so much money if you're it was, under thirteen. It was sick in cash as well. Nice. Yeah. And I got to meet the mayor, so that was a. <laughs> A special day for everyone. <laughs> so you, f you were doing these um, comps. When did you actually go and do like a world tour stop then? Like a men's one? Yeah. Probably at the same, like, when I was like 12, 13, I would have thought. Yeah. And I'd do the, cause remember how big the qualifiers were for that same yeah. piece of ordering event? Always mad. It was like mad. There were so many people entering. It was like the round of 98 and yeah. then the round of 64. Like there were so many people in that event. Um, so those were the first ones which I entered. I never even got into the main event, I don't think. No? No, nah, never. Not once. When we were doing that, that event, or at least when I was judging it, it was like so many people trying to get in those qualifiers that yeah. we really should have just like had a whole week to do the qualifiers, do the qualifiers yeah. beforehand. And there was just like always trying to just fit it in like one day beforehand. It was yeah, never that was a massive time. event on its own. Um, but I, no, I never made it, I never actually made it into the event. I always was crap in contests. I never could ride. Well, what was the first one you made it in then? Because I remember seeing you in Egypt. You were probably in. Egypt. Actually, no, nah, yeah, probably was Egypt. It was the first one you went in. And I also, I think I remember seeing you in France as well, in Le Cat. True. So, so I did, yeah. I don't know which one was I first. think the cat came before. I think it was in the same year. Yeah? Yeah, I remember doing like the cat event. It was horrible. Yeah, that's never a good event. No. <laughs> it's very ghastly. But I, n I never really did many PKRA events. By the time I got to the age where I could like be, you know, that I might make a couple of heats. Yeah. It was it VKW, kind of, oh, okay. you know, whatever it was. It just changed into all the other exactly. stuff. Exactly. And, and then it, it was just, sort of just falling apart uh -huh. by that stage. That makes sense. I kind of lose track of like where people fit in the timeline of all those things changing and stuff happening because yeah. it just starts to blur into like one thing after a while. I mean, the PKA was the glory days, really. Yeah, it was definitely as good as it got, at least. Some things weren't perfect, but it, it was working. I mean, compared to now. Yeah, I mean... There was a lot more stops. There was more prize money. I mean, things weren't as diverse then. You didn't have all the different disciplines and people trying to run a lot of different things at once kind of makes it difficult now. Yeah. Money gets dispersed, like time's dispersed. Even trying to get like places to run the events. It's all like, if you have too many things to run, it's just, you can't do it really. It's the marathon, mate. <laughs> you just put it in one, right? That's how you do it. Yeah, exactly. One event. Marathon. World man. champ. World champ. Who's the best at everything? <laughs> How would you go, you reckon, if you had to do that? Bit of everything. Fuck, 
oh, maybe I could do okay. The wingy as well, I'd let myself down. Yeah, you think you think you'd fall behind with that? The pump foiling and the and the well, actually no, the aerobic aspect of it, the running. Firstly, that's gonna <laughs> let me down <laughs> before anything. <laughs> oh. No, I don't think I'd do too well. I think that's more of a Maxime. Yeah, Maxi would do good at yeah, that. Yeah, he'd win that, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, he probably that. would. Yeah. Couldn't see anyone else winning it. Don't think so. No. Nah. All right, well, let's get back to when you were you were learning your first tricks. Like, what was the progression of those tricks? You said you kind of were doing some pops to blind and you did like a Rayleigh to blind and stuff. What, like, what do you remember kind of coming after that? It was always like uh, blind judge free, front blind mobe, or well, not a mobe, but like a front blind, you know, the real, like the whippy thing to toe yeah. side. That was always a favorite of mine. Like that was the next thing you did? Af- yeah, yeah. After, a, after, after, a, after like the basic kind of blind judge free, I probably did that. Just because I found it easy just to kind of mm-hmm. do that and check the bar around. And then S Ben Freeze, KGBs, front mobs. Uh, and then and then you just start doing chucking the bar around twice. <laughs> yeah, you just get straight into it, double swap. Yeah, well you'd obviously do stuff going to the left. I was always pretty crap going to the left when I was when I was younger. Like I could never I learned back mobs probably when I was like eleven. Little low mobs. Remember they were called low mobs? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that I learned those when I was like 11. Low mob. Yeah. Jeez. Um, and then like slims and stuff and 315s. 315s came quick. That was always there at the start. But like I remember, front side 315. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember always the first double I did was like a, I think it was a front mob to blind. Really? Yeah. That was like the trick of the. That was kind of trending back then yeah that was you saw that and you were like frothing you wanted to do yeah. it yeah so that was the trick and then i did a blind judge five but the blind judge five was like a andy yates used to do them he you remember what the front front mode five yeah he did a nice one the old school Ooh, front mode five. i did the best one though i remember the first blind judge five i did was like um a blind judge three rayleigh again and then like put it to blind like, i did a blind judge free held on with both hands and like then put it in sent it again yeah just because it was like the kite was like so high like got resent into another rail literally and then yeah blind. and then put it in that's sick yeah thought, were you hyped like no nah, because i remember i was with ozzy oswald smith and he called me the tran man after that <laughs> i was pissed it's a big burn it is a big burn have you got him back after that Nah, not yet. Actually, no, he, he always had a video where he had this really long chip and still I say to him, that was your chip. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> but nah, that, yeah, I haven't, yeah. I'm, I wasn't actually that, they always shat on me for doing that. They were not happy with it. Like what, you kept doing that? Or you no, just no, that no, but that was the one and that really stuck in people's heads of like. Why did they remember that so much? I don't know, it was, the kite was really high. It was in a video or they just saw you doing nah, it? Nah, there there's a video of it. Okay. I think it's uh, Bridgelet's hit SA. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, because we were the Bridgelet's back in the day. Some, some people want to dig that up. We'll, um, yeah, we'll link it in the we'll comments. We'll link it, yeah. It's on Edge Water Sports channel, mate. Yeah. Plug in the shop. Certified banger? <laughs> it is, actually. It's a, yeah? yeah? What else happened in that movie? Uh, the front mode to blind. Uh, it was all in wit sounds. Because it was too windy to kite in actual Cape Town for us. <laughs> uh, Ollie Bridge did a back mob off a wave and then a, and then a flat free in a line, which was really was pretty epic, yeah. Um, yeah, that was about it, actually. Did a switch slim. That was a thing. Also, I was doing a lot of switch tricks, or like learning how to do switch tricks. What do you reckon about switch tricks, actually? Well, at the moment, just yeah, in general, like sick. Like, is it good or is it bad? Should no, it be in comps? Like, I don't think it can be bad, can it? I mean, I wouldn't say it could be bad, but imagine going one way and doing a, you know. I mean, some people tried to get rid of them. Doing a slim sev one way and then going back the other way and just doing it again with your other hand. When I was judging, it's crazy. When I was judging, they voted to like not include switch tricks. That's harder, isn't it, really? Like, they didn't want them in the, in the format. 
if you did one thing one way and one thing the other, it just wouldn't count one direction. I know. How dumb was that? Ridiculous, huh? Yeah. Can you imagine someone like kick flips a stair set one way and then comes back and does a switch flip down there and they're like, you, you already did the kick flip, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing it again, bud? You've done it. <laughs> You're yeah, not even going to get a score for so that. So dumb. Cancel that one out. But yeah, I'm a big fan of switch stuff. You do a lot of switch stuff now or? Sometimes, yeah. When I need to swip the, put the leash over the other side. Yeah. Like today I was doing switch freeze just to chuck the leash over. What do you, um, what do you think's like your best like switch trick then? <sighs> Something you've learnt one way like clearly and then you learnt the other way. Probably that switch slim, switch toe slim, what do you call that, a G-spot? Like a Tootsie Roll. Back to toe side? No, or? no, no, no. You do, a, you do a toe side slim. Like a Tootsie. Is that it? Yeah. That. That's your best one? Probably switch, yeah. And it's off your switch? That's a front row, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that one. <sighs> Tell me, boy, quick TikTok break, mate. <laughs> on the talk. Quick one for the talk. Quick one for the talk. So your best trick, your best switch trick is a Tootsie Roll. It's prob probably, yeah. And it's switch toe side? Or That's not a thing though, is it? Is it not? For some people. I feel for me, it's like massive. It really? Feels, like I feel no, like not bad at all, whatever hand. Like yeah. turning doesn't really mess with me, but going like switch toe side for taking off, especially off like flat water or something feels terrible. I don't know if I've really... I mean, I'm not saying that that's not a thing. No, uh, no, I know it's a thing. I know when I started, I was, whenever I went left, I couldn't pop toe side as well. So like right yeah. foot popping toe side was never as good, but it's I not mean, the same now. Now it's the same. I've been doing it for so long, yeah. but now it's... Like Carolina doesn't have any problem doing like a chrome over a tootsie, like yeah, either, either way. way. But yeah. for me, it just feels like so whack. Like, Maybe like a G spot as well, switch G spot. Yeah. It's a trick. And you have like a dominant hand then, like one that's- Definitely my right is obviously the best. Yeah. I'd love to be able to do like a blind judge five, my left hand. Yeah. I think it would look sick as well. So you're not doing like any, any tricks with like two passes- No, no, no. To no. your left, just stuff's to your right. Your double, like double handle passes and stuff all going to the right. No, you can do like slim salves or- so you do, you do do some both ways. Yeah, but not with my left hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I I'm saying. what you mean, yeah. yeah. Like, I wouldn't do, I can't do any doubles with my left hand. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's pretty normal for lots of people. Yeah. They can't really, like, one of their hands is obviously stronger. Yeah, exactly. The starting hand is the strong one. Uh-huh. Well, pretty sure Yuri Zoon did a KGB5 with his weak hand. Yeah. I think so. I think it was on that Hidden Lions video he did it. You remember that KGB7 he did in Brazil? Mm, no, I don't. Don't remember that clear? No. It's pretty insane. It was a good one. Yeah. He did some crazy stuff. He also did like a switch from Mode 5. Yeah. Yeah, in the Hidden Lines video. Yeah, he did a lot of, a lot of pretty powered tricks, I'd say that. No shit. <laughs> What have you, what have you done that other people haven't done? Like what, M, what MBDs have you got? Me? Never, never been done. <laughs> what do you think you've done? I don't know. Can't think of any? <laughs> there must be some. Yeah, there's definitely, I think that, I don't know. You don't remember? You no, just of course I remember, but you know, whenever you say this shit, you sound like a dick, don't you? Well, that's what we're here for. Oh, I don't know, like a fucking, whatever I do from blind, I guess is. Yeah, like the blind front to blinds. It's never been done. That's definitely MBD. Blind, blind judge five has never been done. Like a blind, I did that like a couple of blind mode fives going the other way to the left. A blind mode five. So you like, you go blind and you just unwrap yourself and do a mode five. But that sounds pretty wild. Yeah, I don't think that's been done. Toe what side, about double half cab mode? Yeah. Toe slim sev. Yep. Uh, like double crows from toe. 
But that's not really, that's like a fucking dick, dicking around trick, isn't it? You know. That wasn't a good one. Like, you're not going to. What about? I'm not going to write, write home about that now. What you? about, did you do the, did you do the toe, toe back five? Toe side rally, back side five first? Do I think? don't know who did that. I did it really early on, but I don't know who I did it first. You don't think you did it? Uh, I'm not 100%. I did, I'm like 80% that maybe I did it first. But Yeah. I remember seeing one like really good one. I don't know if you sent it to me or something. And you did a good one. I remember like other people trying to do them or, or doing one, not doing them too well. Yeah. And then I remember you did one that was, was, was pretty legit. Yeah, I remember doing. I remember doing my first one with like the kite really high and just. I don't know, I kind of crap one, but you know, did one. So. Does it count then? If well, it counts, doesn't it? But it's not that sick. What do you what you think? Like, what about in the scheme of things? Like, if someone's done something and just done it like super bad, and then someone's done something and they've done it like real proper yeah well obviously the like, proper one you're gonna be like oh shit but like the first person to do that rotation ever is obviously gonna be the first one to ever do it but like what about let's say we go back to like doing like the double like double back roller toe so like double half cab yeah what from toe no just from just from regular oh, okay yeah, yeah like i remember back in the day like tack did what i can remember as being like yeah the first one a first pretty legit one yeah and like before that, people had definitely done it with had their they? kite high. Yeah. Like just sending it, like oh. tons of people have done a double back roll the toe side. Like not good, but they've done it. But there was always something different about tax when they always did one like that. Well, it was hucked. It was yeah. just like you could see the board like edging and the takeoff was what was initiating the trick, like the rotation. Yeah. I mean, not so much sent. That was like the the thing I did that because I did the triple one of that was probably an MBD as well the the double the double flip the back row doof, doof, to toe yeah not just one two of them and then I, rem I remember I did the the back row and then it was kind of like an under flip back row under flip to blind yeah I remember. and I did that when it, like at the end of one of these world junior contests yeah um, and post it, whatever, and it was like, well, kite high, whatever. It was, it was pretty horrible to look at. And then Hadlo did the same thing in Brazil, like later that year. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that pretty. And because like pretty clearly, that's all. That's like about. It was like the same rotation and the same trick. Uh huh. But his was more proper, so it was like, you know. Who did it I far? mean, there's definitely something really... to it, like doing a trick like that where it's not so. It's not such an obvious like step to take to do one flip then an under flip, even with your kite high is like you've done something like different. Yeah. It's obviously like a step beyond something else that was yeah, happening. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I see where I see where you're coming from. Don't know. It depends. Yeah. Well, did you did you ever pay back pay that trick? Did you pay him the money? No, no. Well, that's kind of why I was asking because I. It was the toe it back was, five, wasn't it? It was the toe back five, and I also forgot how much I was said I'd pay, and also <laughs> some other people said they were going to pay. So if you're at home and you remember you said you were going to pay, there was a lot of people jumping on that. It, it might be time to pay. I mean, there I, was a couple of good ones in Brazil. I re, that's what I was going to say. You d, you did one that I remember you sending me. And then Ewan did a really good one in Brazil as well, so... So I'm laughing. No, but that was two years ago, not now. <laughs> I mean, the yeah. Was the, <laughs> Wait, like, but... three years ago, almost already. Well, I don't even... Did you crash, actually? I don't remember. I did a, I did a couple. I did, like... Well, you downlooped or something. I did one or two good ones at home, and I did one that I probably should have made, but I never made, but... It might have been that one, I think, you sent me. It was in, it was like in the otter with like the muddy. Yeah. It's probably the one. Back edged it. I couldn't see the land. Like, you know when the water's so glassy that you can't actually see? Uh huh. And when everything's brown like that, it's just like you have no clue where the landing is. It's just. It's like riding, riding at cable at night with the lights on. Have you ever done that? No. You can't see the landing at all. It's, I can it's imagine. terrible. Just like ready for knee destruction. Yeah. But now there's been a couple first tricks in there that have come about, but I don't know. I mean, you'd have 
There'd have to be quite a few NBD um, lines you've done as well. Like, yeah, but you're not going to claim that with tricks you? in a line. I mean, you can, but like, you... I mean, it's not like you want to claim it. But if like you're doing something other people haven't done, I still feel like that's pretty noteworthy. Like, yeah, I guess so. I prefer to someone say it for me. Yeah. I feel like a twat. I mean, I, I mean, I'll say it. Yeah, I mean, you're that down for it. That's <laughs> <you? laughs> what I'm here for. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers, boss. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're you're kind of like pretty. You're pretty into the lines, I would say. Like, as far as I can the ones tell, before from, this interview, just like filming, <laughs> just like filming with you, it seems like that's like what you want to do is string yeah. a couple tricks together, yeah. at least two. Yeah. What's What's that about? Like, why are you drawn to doing that, do you think? I don't know. I think it looks cool. And if you've got power in your kite, why not do something? Like, you feel like like, you've done one and you can still do more. Yeah, and I also think it's like when I'm riding at home, it's like, you know, you get no wind. Like, the wind's so bad, like, a lot of the time. Yeah. When the wind's good, you've got to make the most of it, don't you? (laughs) Yeah, you just... Two tricks, one tack, mate. Just jam a few in there, you reckon, buddy? <laughs> Double the amount of tricks. That <laughs> sash. <laughs> but nah. Three in one tack out of me way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cheers, see Back you later. Back them out. Cheers. That's warm up. Done. <laughs> but no, I think it do, And it also looks cool. And like, you can do something where you like land blind and instead of just chucking it around the back, you kind of, you hold it there and then you can pop from blind or you land toe side and... So you Pop use again from toe side. So you use one trick as like a setup for the yeah, next trick. Yeah, to get trick. into the next one. Exactly. Yeah. Also, I think it's just like more, you know, just single tricks unless it's something like a backside nine. Yeah. You know, like. It's all ABD pretty much, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. And it's like, I don't know, I, I'm probably not going to chuck a, chuck something up, which is just like one. If I'm going to film for a video, I want it to be like mostly lines, unless it's yeah. something like a I mean, trick where it's kind of hard to do something after. I also like about lines is that, like, as a filmer and someone like putting together the film, there is like more space. Like, when you just see like single trick, single trick, single trick, single trick, it becomes like almost monotonous. That it's always like the same timing of like doing yeah, a trick. 5.6 seconds. Exactly. Yeah. But if you've got a line in there, then like you're filling like a larger gap yeah. and it's like a longer take. Yeah, you can make that video go from three minutes <laughs> to five real quick. <laughs> Is that why you only come to Brazil for like 10 days? Yeah. Film everything. Kite for three of them. You, you get, you, get it's really like you were there a month, wasn't it? Because yeah. if you're doing three times as many tricks in exactly. one Exactly. <laughs> When you think about it like that, quick math. So, do you d- do you uh, when you go into a line? Do you think, oh, I'm gonna do this trick and then that, and if it works out that, or do you kind of just wing it? Nah, like the one, the one from Brazil, the back free, and then the like the the back row under flip to blind. Yeah, remember that line. Yeah, I remember you did a did like a flat back three. Yeah, exactly, and then s- straight into it. The back three there was just to do something, you just, just so it's to... not a single trick. Okay, because you know you'd done that trick already. And exactly, I've done that trick hundred, and I feel like a really quick back three. Yeah, looks cool, and also when people look at it, it's like, oh, not Tom doing the same shit again. He's doing something different, you know. Yeah. Whereas like. Uh, some of them I go in like completely like just gonna do this one trick and then see how I feel. And those are the best ones. Like I've done like a a toe, a tootsie to like a double half cab mobe. That was like a, a fun line to do because you come straight out of the tootsie and you landed heel and then just carved up into it. But you went into the tootsie thinking you were gonna do a double no, half no, cab mobe? No, it was mode. like whatever after. It was like I could have done a maybe a, a free one one like a rewind or like a you know so what is it then when you land and you you, you were going is it like you've got so much tension then you're just like i've got enough tension i can whip into a double yeah half you just or? see what you and you see what you fancy like you see i don't know the board usually goes like you you like you know what you want to do before you like you've taken off but maybe you haven't just like told yourself it yet. yeah 
Like you know what you're gonna do, but you haven't like said it. But it's, maybe it's like a bit of instinct as well, yeah, because exactly. you've done a lot of them, and then you're just like, oh, I'm set up good for this. I'll just do that. Yeah. Whereas like the the crow to blind and then popping from blind and the mm -hmm. the front to blind was like an easy thing to come up with. Like it didn't take a genius to yeah. you know to figure that. It's kind of like a bit more like a surfing kind of approach because the wind and the setup from doing like one trick is like just deciding what you could do on the second trick, sort of like you're on a wave. You can't just go and do like a massive punt three or something on any wave. It's gotta be Life like the to section. Float on the forehand. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, in waves, like I don't know what's going gonna happen. Like in waves, it's all to play for. Yeah, you just like sometimes go. I do like a like a flat five, like down the like down the wave over the back of it, kind yep. of using the back as a kick, like flat five down, and then I do like a like do a bottom turn and then just go back up and go do up. Something. And I did like a I did like a front blind mode, but the kite was like fucking just whipping everywhere. wherever it was. Yeah, like I don't even like you it, do, you, I'm not paying attention to the kite at that point. Like it's doing its own thing. In a way, that almost makes what you're doing like kind of sicker like it works better like if your kite's just going anywhere and you're like in the space of a wave and moving around in the transition it kind of doesn't matter yeah and like, i feel like if the kite's got power in it and you know you're not fucking hanging underneath it like the most important thing in that whole aspect for me is just like how you're interacting with the wave and taking off and like landing into the wave exactly like today like it was all like if there was more wind there, like you could have done a lot when you like you came from the trick and landed into the wave. Like there was, yeah, a good spot out there. Yeah, you think you're gonna come back? Yeah, well we're gonna have to, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that that like whole line aspect and what you're really into? Do you think that like is coming as well from like skateboarding? Or? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it, like when you watch a, a, a part, like there is barely any like just single tricks. Right nowadays, yeah, there like, might be like four or five in the in the whole video. Yeah, exactly. Like if it's a single trick, it's just something like really insane. Exactly, it's got to be something crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you think like that's just like a board, maybe a more board sport kind of yeah, approach. Yeah, I think it's just, just what I want to link things I wanna together. Do. Like it's what excites me when I go on the water. Like it's just what I'm. I don't know. If I went out there and did just like just stock shit I don't know I wouldn't be that enthusiastic to go out yeah I mean I'm not really at a level of like freestyle anymore where that's like what I'm thinking in my head but if I'm riding a wake skate or something like I've done the same trick so many times that it's like for me as well it needs to be like in a line some things or yeah. it's, or it's I mean, just like why do the same three shove back big front big like if it's not like connected somehow yeah or something i mean different. i did my first what blind judge five when i was like 11 or 12 so it was like 10 years ago yeah i mean going out on the water and doing a you know a double isn't gonna really push my buttons i guess so, and i guess like you know everyone does the shit differently like noe does like these, you know crazy grabs and shit and you and does his thing like everyone does it differently you know cockaluto just goes and like spins as much as he can yeah and you know everyone does everyone tries to like kind of get out of doing the same shit yeah i mean you're trying to like make something that's like original exactly and, and like, like be, your, yourself not just just be the best kiter that like you can you know be yeah so you feel like your your draw card is like that kind of approach to writing I like, guess so, and I think like people might pick up on it. Like people might start doing it as well. You but, think that will become more of like an approach people are going to take more kind of line. I mean, surely. I mean that that's like a really like park kind of orientated thing. Is like everyone wants to do lines. They want to have the rails set up in a line. It's just like the events usually aren't in places that just allow that to happen. Good so. It would be that like most of the time we would have lines in an event on Kite Park League, but just the physical locations like won't let that kind of happen most of the time. Yeah. So I feel like you're, you're someone that would probably play really well into that kind of format. Yeah. And also like going back to like, I don't know, flat water kind of 
doesn't excite, excite me as much as it like used to because like now I prefer to like go out and go and like I don't know even just like riding in chop and like a couple like kickers about shit's like moving at you it's like subway surfer in it you know you've got fucking trains coming out of you and like, <laughs> all, you know all this stuff like when we're like we're riding kickers like you could do a trick like a single trick you thought it was just going to be a single trick and then uh-huh. in front of you there's just going to be a wave and yeah. you're like you're not just going to pass up on the opportunity of a kicker right there well it's like it's like the park versus flat water if the park versus like flat ground even skateboarding exactly you're you going to do just, something with it you can't just skate the flat ground forever like yeah. You want to do something with obstacles and interacting. Yeah, exactly. And it makes it fun. So what would you say your first like proper video part was? We talked about this video part where you did like some kid tricks and some bullshit. What do you think like the first like real bullshit? Well, you said it was bullshit. They were Which roasting you, that? mate. Oh yeah, that was, oh, yeah. was No, fucking... no, no, yeah. That was like a family. A Come on, that was a family video, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was a feature. You were just featuring. Yeah, I was featuring. Okay. Um, so what was the first one then? That my was just first your, one? You, it's only you in the video. What's oh, the it was one? probably 10. It was 10? Yeah, it was called 10. It's on Vimeo. It's called 10. It's fucking sick. I do like parkour and stuff in it. Got holes in my shoes, go down hills on a longboard, do fucking 180 power slides. Sick. What about the kite boarding? Yeah, there's a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like I don't know. I did a, I do a couple of fit tricks from mode five. Uh, there's some of that Cape Town footage in there. That's probably my first video. That got like made for me and everything. Like felt a bit special when that came out. Yeah. And then I did. Um, was that like? Do you feel like that was like a, a like a respectable kind of level of trick? Yeah. Some you, of the tricks. No, were... no, definitely. It wasn't like it was like it was. They were decent tricks. Okay. You know, it wasn't just like. And you were ten. Yeah, it was 10. Jesus. Well, it was 12. It could have been 12. Right, 10 or 12, it was called one of them. Could have been 12. We're going to find it. We're going to put it in the comments. They're going to see. Um, And then probably the next one was when I was 16, and that had, like, I'd done a lot of WA then, and I remember, like, the footage I got from WA was, like, better than I've ever ever got before. So it was another four years until you did another video. Yeah, because in that time I had a... I broke my knee and I competed a lot. You broke your knee? Yeah, when I was like 14, 15, I think. I did a, I had something called an osteochondral fracture. It's where like the, the, the tibia and the fibia hit together like that. And oh. it chipped off some of, the, some of the cartilage inside of my knee. And that kind of like, it was because I had fucking really weak legs. I still do. Yeah. Um, and that was like my worst injury to date because that, I had my leg in like a straight leg locked out brace. I think I remember for that. For three months. I didn't move my knee for three months because they wanted to let this bit of cartilage, they, they screwed it back on with dissolvable screws. Yeah. And they wanted to let it fully set yeah. um, before I even moved my knee. So the cartilage was just floating around and they screwed it back together. So that was, yeah, that was the worst injury I've ever had like how long did that take till you could kite again? Eight months, about. It and three of those months, you just had your legs straight. Just straight. So I came out and my leg was like this. Oh. Um, yeah, it was really bad, that. And like that, and like 15, was probably when I started doing like, probably when my mindset changed about like just doing the same stuff as everyone else. Yeah. It's probably when I started doing, you know, a bit different stuff and it wasn't until... I probably did the next knee about two years later um, when I really, you know, was like, oh, well, if I'm going to actually make a, a name for myself, yeah. you I've need got, to do something, I've got to do something different. different. But the, the other knee was like an ACL and that was like easy. That was like compared to the left knee, that was... How did, how did you hurt the left knee though? Oh, I think it was cut. I, like, I don't remember it happening. It didn't hurt or nothing, and I could just feel this bit of cartilage coming out the side of my knee. Ugh. And I was like pushing it back in. It's like the worst, it was a horrible feeling, but I'd never had anything where I was like, ah, that really hurt. Like it yeah. never did anything like that. It was not like doing my ACL where I did a boogie loop on an 11 meter rebel, and it just like just, just dropped collapsed. me. Yeah, and just collapsed, exactly. Shit. Um, is but, that like all the injuries you've had or you yeah i mean that's like last year I, I did like 
I chipped a bit of cartilage off of my right knee. Yeah. Um, but I, like, I'm older now, so they just whipped it out and it was like a month's recovery, whatever. But then obviously just like wrists and feet skating and just like broke my ankle like a couple of months ago. But like, you know, nothing big for a while, which I'm really glad about. So you've basically just done both your knees, your ankle. Yeah. And your wrist, you broke your wrist. Yeah, and pretty a couple, badly. A couple metatarsals at, at skating, just like, you know, when you fold your foot like that. Wow. It's nothing, mate. Like, like, light, light. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's just lucky. Isn't Four it? weeks, mate. <laughs> so back to the video parts. Yeah. Uh, so Four t- you, you did one when you were twelve or eleven. You said. Yeah. Then, you, then your next one wasn't until you were like sixteen. Sixteen. And that was um, that was like Cape Town and WA footage. Yeah. Because that was the first time I competed in King of the Air was when I was sixteen. So I also did some. I filmed a bit of Ollie there. And then my next one was probably Brazil the year after when I went for the first time. Yeah. That was the best trip. Like, when I was that age, that's what, like, exactly what I needed. I was there with Maxime and and Christian Teo and Ampha. Yeah. So it was kind of like the four of us at the time were doing, like, our thing. Um, Christian Teo? Yeah. What happened to him? Yeah, I remember him being really good. Yeah, he was really good. I don't know, he just went off the radar. I don't really... You don't know. I don't know. I don't don't know. know. I haven't switched him in a well, while. We've seen Maxime. He was here. Obviously. I've seen Anther kiting still yeah, quite he still well. Yeah, he does it a bit. Um, and that trip helped me loads because it was like just riding with those lot every day for two weeks. Yeah. And I, I think I just went like that, like the progression. And you were just there like by yourself? No, not... with Fabio, mate. Oh, yeah, you were yeah, training. Yeah, training camp. Nice. You got into shape? Big, big legs on they that trip, They were getting mate. into shape. But yeah? I was always slacking in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember the press-ups and yoga and all the above, but I was always slacking a bit on it. But that was a really sick trip for me. I needed that. Um, I got to a good level, and then I put a video out from that trip. Okay, so the footage was from that trip. Yeah, which went really well. Um, Who filmed it? Just Fabio, just... Training camera. Yeah, just dad cammed it, smashed it out. Smashed it out. There you go. And then my next one was probably light work. A couple, like, what was that, two years ago? Really? That was the next one? Yeah, I would have thought so. Like, there was bits in between. There was, like, WA in between. And yeah. I did all kinds of stuff in between, but it was nothing, like, that I really put my mind to and thought, this is what I want to do. And yeah. I feel like a lot, of, a lot of people, like, the first thing that they probably think of is light work. Yeah, I would have thought so. Like that was something like different and like monumental kind of riding wise, something different was happening. Like you could see like you were doing before you were just like, like you said, you were doing like what other people were yeah. doing more or less. And then, yeah, you would in that movie, you were like stringing together some lines and doing some, doing some different, doing, stuff. trying some different tricks. Yeah. That, that, that video did doing. come out really well. I was into that. It was short, but it was. I don't know. I think the riding that was in it was... That was with Cabrina, right? Light work? No, it was not with North. What was the one with Cabrina then? I swear there was one before that then. What did I do? Was there? I don't know if there was. There was something with Cabrina, I remember. Maybe it was like a product yeah? video. Maybe, oh, we went to Prince Edward Island with, yeah. with Spud and yeah. did the video there. Well, I did a couple of tricks, but I'd just come back from that wrist... Okay. Um, so I thought I remember there being some good tricks there on that. Yeah, there was a couple. I remember doing a few, but it was nothing to... Okay, nothing special. Nothing though. that special, no. But light work was the neck, was the thing that, you know, was yeah. I thought I was happy with the riding in that. So we were talking about sponsors before and we didn't really finish that, like, or the, the kites you were riding, which yeah. kind of leads into sponsorship. You said you got the switchblade, you moved to the Neo. The and Evo. Then the Evo. Yeah. And then, I guess your mum was riding north and everything, exactly. right? Your whole family was on was, north. And the shop stocked north, so it was all like a really, yeah. you know, it was an easy place to I to mean, fit. yeah, if your whole family has north, you're just going to ride north. Exactly. You? And the kites, were, like, the kites were good, and they, they looked after us so well. They made us like special boards and whatnot. Like yeah. Little one Little ground boards. boards. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. It was perfect. Um, and then as I got older... 
I don't know what happened really. I kind of just like the whole switch came when it went north to Duotone and all of that. And I yep. kind of was. Were you there for when it switched actually? Yeah, yeah. I knew about it and I kind of. Then I thought maybe I'd jump ship because I knew that North Kiteboarding wasn't just going to die, like, and never be something again. Yeah. You know, like, it was the biggest name in kiting and it wasn't just going to. Yeah. You know, just not, not exist. Um, and what, you got an offer from Cabrina? Or uh, like? Yeah, yeah, and I got, yeah, got an offer from, from Cabrina and a couple other places, but went with Cabrina, and it was a good time with them. I had a really, like, I mean, the kites weren't amazing, and, you know, they weren't the best kites in the world, but I did some good riding. I enjoyed, like, yeah. you know, going to Maui was sick and doing all that kind of stuff, like, Having the team vibe was yeah good. exactly that yeah having a t more of a team vibe than it was a, a, a what now is duo time was cool yeah um, and then North came about and I was like oh it's pretty cool I had no intentions of like going there like yeah you know before I knew it was a thing like I didn't I wasn't signing the contract for Cabrina thinking I'm gonna be oh, yeah. North next year you know not that much of a dick but. Um, but you thought like North is. I ending, thought North was going to come back, and you think it was going to come back. But it was like, what is it going to be like? Like no one knew anything. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of North did its thing and did its. You know, the orbit came out and it, they won the King of the Air, and I think I was already on the team at that point. And it was always like I don't know. It always felt like it was gonna. It was gonna happen with Mystic. I always needed the. Did it help that a lot of the people from Cabrina actually went to North as well? Like from, from the design team and stuff like but that? I think they went, yeah, maybe, they, maybe it did help a little bit. And I knew like, I don't know, it seemed like an obvious thing that was gonna happen. Yeah. Almost. Um, and I, you know, I'd kind of been vaguely in touch with Mystic for a while at this point. Yeah. So it was like, North kind of Mystic, came, yeah. North Mystic, it all came together. Um, and I can't really see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Even if they do kick me off, I don't think anyone would really take me. Do you don't think so? <laughs> I don't know who would. I don't know, I think you could pick S something up. Swindle something, yeah. yeah. Maybe get on flow or something. Yeah. A couple discounts. I mean, a couple stickers, mate. Like, you can take two off the table if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Whatever. Whatever you want. Can I put to. it in my bio as a sponsor? Um, we'll see first, like, see, how you go. See like, how I go, and then... You know, just take it slow. We don't want to rush things. Where do you want the sticker? Have you got a... Yeah, we'll send you the PDF with um, the placement and everything later, so... That's understandable. Yeah. Sweet. So you don't see yourself going to another brand, is what you're saying, no, anytime soon? No, no, What about trying, like, different... North can wipe the sweat off their foreheads, I guess. What about, um... What about trying different gear and stuff like that? You, are, you in, are you into just like trying different boards and kites or you just, you just know what you have and you just stick with that? And No, I'm into, I'm into it. I, don't, I try not to focus too heavily on what I'm riding. I just think the pulse I'm using at the moment works well. Like yeah. For what I'm doing, works sick. Yeah. Uh, the board works. Like, yeah. I, never, I never do something and think, oh, so you got what it could have been better with that. Like, I feel like I'm in a good setup and also I hate the technicalities of the shit, like I can't, like when I get my kite, I just get it and fucking ride it. Well, that's what I'm kind of asking, like, do you just get it and ride it yeah. and whatever it is it is? Like, that's why I barely foil, there's just too many fucking bolts going Yeah, on. it's too techy for you. Yeah, it is, like I can barely f screw my boots in, let alone set up, like, but the best foil I own is that Go foil that I brought about four or five years ago, which takes three bolts to set up. <laughs> what about your brothers? They're right into foiling. Can't yeah, they help yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Like, they're well into it. And they're, like, I mean, guys wants to do his Olympic thing. Like Ollie, we were chatting to Ollie the other day. He says he might jump on it, but we'll see how legit that was. But yeah, I think it's just nah with gear and stuff. I just I'm, I like what I'm on. It works well. Um, where yeah. where do you think you see like development heading like with gear? Is there anything you see kind of? as a trend or just coming along or something something you might see that's going to happen or you just think it's kind of like performance wise well just anything like shapes and like different types of performance kites like having that. a kite that just is big but feels good 
you know? Yeah. Having a, like, a 12 that feels nice to ride. Like, yeah. on a day like today, it doesn't hurt your forearms when you're just moving the thing. Yeah. Like, I think something like that, like, there's so much progress to be made in that aspect. And also just, like, just the smallest things, like that bar from North, like, when you release it to to do it back, you just click the chicken loop into the into the thing and it just yeah. goes, like, just the s- small things like that. Small I think, stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. There's been a lot of development in that kind of stuff, I exactly. guess. Like click in loop and all that, all the one pump and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, just and making I mean, stuff easier. I think what people, would, I think what they're doing with like the big air kites is like they're doing something that are like yeah, people are going higher than they've ever gone. Yeah, people are doing fucking two loops and a jump. You know. Yeah. Whereas, like, imagine that 10 years ago. I mean, yeah. Couldn't imagine it. No, it wasn't possible. Exactly. Kites definitely developed, like... Yeah, 100%. The, the understanding of what kites are doing and just, like, panel layouts, the way things are constructed, like, reducing weight, this and that, like, everything's, like, continually evolving a bit. Yeah, and I mean, if all the eyes were on freestyle, like, they are on big air, like, imagine how good the freestyle kites would be. Yeah. Like, the amount of cash that gets spent on making a good big air kite and mm-hmm. a good free ride kite if that was put into a freestyle kite you probably have like a, a way better kite than what we're on right now yeah but it's just the eyes aren't there and the money's in there but i feel like you know. mo- most of the kites like that we're on for freestyle is like 10 year old tech basically yeah it's probably the same yeah you know but didn't change much maybe they got some new materials but like the designs and everything are like pretty old school yeah which is i don't know People are still doing good tricks, aren't they? I mean, skateboards haven't changed in a long time either, yeah. so... I don't know, it's kind of what I'm thinking with my setup. It's, it's good, I like it. Yeah. It's easy, I can throw it about, I can fucking, you know, take my board, all kitted up on the plane, like, I can grind it across rocks and stuff. Like, that's where, like, the value comes for me, like, just being able to do whatever I want, like, with gear and it just be, like... Like, longevity. Go another day, like, to, smashing your kite up in waves <laughs> and it's just like you know it gets washed up on the beach you go grab it flick the lines around and then chuck it back up like, yeah you know that kind of stuff is more important so to you me. want it to be durable yeah i want above anything you know else. i want stuff to last i want like you know five ten years time you can still ride i can still give that kite to someone that yeah. can go and ride it you know i mean that's cool like if you gear if your gear lasts then it's still like worth something for someone else like exactly. a younger guy that might not have as much money yeah he like, can still pick something up cheap and it's still usable it's not just like we're throwing stuff in the bin every it's year. all well and good doing like really light thin kites that are gonna but you know what they're gonna be like like i see the 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 kites that are really light and thin at the moment after a year's worth of use like they're like fucking tissue paper yeah you know they're pretty clapped out definitely so what do you think being a pro is all about these days? Like At the moment? Yeah. It depends which way you want to go. I think that's the thing. If I was 10 or 11 now, I yeah. wouldn't have a clue what I'd want to do. Like, I wouldn't know what, like, what the fuck do you do. Yeah. And like, I think it's so hard for kids growing up now to actually know what they, yeah. what they want. Whereas like, when I was growing up, it was like peak RA. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they're making cash, they're doing these events, they're getting good coverage, like, it's just what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, you do king of the year, end of the year. But now, like, you're yeah, going to chuck up do? a wing, or you're going to do a doobie loop, or you're going to f- fucking go do some passes. Like, what are you going to do? Um, so being a pro now is just like being, I don't know, just like true to what you like. Yeah. I yeah. guess, like, if you're really into, I don't know, taking your board off and spinning around cool but like I don't think it's you know I feel like the fundamentals will always be chucking the bar back around your back and I think if you like you know if you can chuck it around the back a couple of times like yeah you can kind of then you have a green card to go and do like whatever you want because you have the fundamentals of like being a good kiter I feel like even what you're no. saying, like it gives you have like a certain amount of kite control. And yeah, exactly. You know where you are, and you know you know what's yeah. going on. Um, even however big, you know this big air at the moment it gets. 
I still feel like the fundamentals will always be unhooking and yeah. chucking the bar around your back because like ultimately it is way more technical than anything else mm -hmm. done in, in kind of like I get that I doing mean, a it's tight loop and a front row and taking your board off like I get like it's sick and if that's what you're into cool yeah. you know more power to you but like it's never going to be as technical as someone doing a KGB 7 no, and there's just not as much variation yeah, between exactly. what's happening. Like, if everything starts from like a straight jump takeoff, you're kind of always soaring, just doing something while soaring, versus like a different approach to takeoff or yeah. a different spin or a different way to pass the bar or yeah, it's whatever you want to do in that. But like, I always think that that freestyle and passing the bar will always mm -hmm. become. I mean, that's the roots for me. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I always feel, I want to, you know, I want people to be coming up and like these kids to like go out with their mates and start filming stuff. Yeah. Like picking up cameras, like making edits and stuff, chucking them on YouTube. Yeah. Like you don't see enough kite. No. Nah. Longer form. Not even longer form, just longer than 15 seconds. Well, just like an edit, like. Just like chuck up a two, three minute edit. Like, back in the day, that was kind of like, that's how you got sponsored. Yeah, exactly. Do it to a really like shit song, like. And I think even now, some, yeah, like even now, people are putting a lot of emphasis on social media, like the TikTok, the Instagram, and stuff. But ultimately, like kids coming up and just posting their, like you say, like a ten-second clip on there, they're just lost in the sea. It's like, gone. If they make an edit that's three minutes and it's you like remember, you might remember it, it's really banging. They might actually get noticed. Exactly. And like it's like older people like me that run companies and stuff. So there's still that, you know, old school metric and logic of like watching videos and seeing what's happening. And I get like from like a brand's perspective, oh, this kid's got fifty thousand followers and ten thousand people view his stories and. 700 people reply to him like you know they are obviously they've got a lot of eyes on them so it's like oh we'd obviously sponsor him because you know yeah grow our brand whatever but like it would be cool to see you know just saying like kids going out and filming and you know just having a good time just like enjoying kiting or you know well yeah it's creative it it's so, also creative right yeah, it's fun doing you, what you want to do in like editing and like exactly not being so like fucking Gym of six, <laughs> like Hampus. <laughs> <laughs> Gym of six, fucking kite off and like I want, you know, just yeah, you have just, fun doing that. Just don't be like, just get creative and just try some stuff. Just do your thing, yeah. What do you think makes a good kiter, Tom? I think someone who's just like in control and just looks cool when they're doing it. Yeah, like I don't like. You can be doing basic tricks, but if you look sick, like... So it's control, you And you reckon? look, yeah, you look controlled and you look like you know what you're doing. Uh, like little things like relaunching the kite and just like knowing where you are and like... Yeah. That's what makes someone good, I think. Just being like, like you, the board and the kite is all just like working. Yeah. Smooth together. Things are just happening Things smoothly. are just happening and you're just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say. What about you? What about like... Oh, I agree. What about who, you? I mean, yeah, for me it's the same thing. Like, I would, I would rate like kite control um, and like a variety yeah. approach to things. Like, I know if people can do like some different things, like in different aspects of the sport, no matter kind of how good they are at each of those aspects, I'm like, okay, they have a certain level of control. Yeah. And like, to me, that like defines if they're a good kiter or like not. doing stuff both ways. Exactly. Like knowing how to pop, you know, each way on toe side, whatever. You like know. if I see someone and they're just doing like strictly one aspect and then they're like completely rubbish at like anything else they're trying, um, to me, they're not really a good kiter. Yeah, exactly. Like, a good kiter would have the control to at least like adapt somewhat into something whether everything they did looked good like if they went into the waves for example they might really not, not know what they're doing but like there would be a moment every now and again where they're doing like a nice turn or something yeah where they could do something yeah so where do you see the sport heading do you think you said big air is massive now and that's kind of what what's really getting pushed a lot do you think that's like going to keep going or do you think maybe it's gonna gonna change again 
For a bit, for sure. For like, I can't. I can see it like staying how it is and getting bigger for like the next three, four years. I'd say. You still think there's another three years in it? I think there's a lot of time in it. Like these kids are really good. Like the level has been pushed so much in such a short period of time. You know. Yeah. Um, I think there is more time in it, and like, for trends to die, it usually takes one or two years, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, and I'd say we haven't reached a peak in big A yet. So I'm saying like three, four years, and then, but I feel like it depends what other people do. Like, if we other put, people could influence, you know, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we put out this video and it goes <laughs> fucking viral. <laughs> I mean, if, if what? So what you're saying? If people are really into FPV and paragliding, things like, might change. Yeah. Everyone's going to just love <laughs> just droning about, losing the drone, find yeah. it for an hour, <laughs> lose it the next day, another hour. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, I feel like at the moment, Big Air's kind of stay for a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a cycle. Like, honestly, in the early 2000s, like when I was a kid and I was learning to kite, that's also what was like the mainstream thing was big air. Yeah. Like you see all these videos now like of Lou Wyman back then doing handle passes and stuff. And the truth was he just like wasn't, he didn't get any cred for doing that at all because people like didn't understand it. That wasn't the trend. Like people were just into doing jumps and yeah. double rolls, triple rolls. Like I remember like Adam Cook, or Kook or whatever his name is, who r rode Nash before. He was in like the old Nash videos doing like eight, I think like eight rolls or something. Yeah, like and I jump. also feel like with Big Air, I don't know, hopefully, I don't know, people come accustomed to like, is it actually fucking worth it? Like it's so dangerous. Like from what happened to Yannick recently, like meant like, suppose, like one of the best Big Air riders in the world. Yeah. Um, just both their, both of his ankles like completely gone. Yeah. Like actually gone. And like at twenty one. Yeah. Well, it's not... however, however old he is, twenty. Like that's a, a year of his life. Like you never know if he's gonna kite the same as he did. Yeah, it's not ideal. For what was it in the in the event? A grand, a thousand euros. I mean, yeah, the money was nothing. Like... So like, is it worth? Is it worth it? I get that in freestyle. Yeah, you get like ACLs are a common thing to do, but it's like. It's not a life-changing injury, you know? Yeah. Six months and you're back underwater. And, like, it's not six months of doing nothing. Like, you're walking two weeks later. Yeah. Like, you can have a life. Whereas, like, he's got fucking tripods sticking out of his ankles. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, got it's a lot really of metal bad. Inside. Like, it's yeah. really fucking bad. And, like, that could happen to anyone. You feel like that's just, like, a roll of dice situation? It's just luck of the draw, isn't it? Like, he got so unlucky. You know, just tiny bit wrong timing. Same thing he not normally enough does. Dust. Or you Pardon? feel like it was just like the same thing he would normally do and then just get I mean, he probably mistimed it a tiny bit. Not yeah. enough. Gus probably went at the time. But he wasn't trying like a new tricky yeah, hand exactly. done or something like that. Yeah, exactly. trying to do me, You see him doing all the time. You know, so I mean, we've seen of it, is we've, it actually worth it? We've it? seen that a bit, right? Like, we've seen Lewis, like... Exactly. Luff out and drink some water and have to go to hospital for a while like that could have easily killed him yeah jesse yeah fell broke, out of the sky broke, broke his legs broke his legs like it's stupid it is dumb like i mean if you the at thing such is, a young age it's dumb at what how i feel like when you're 20 when you're in your teens and then you're in your 20s you want to be making the most and like doing what your body can like really do yeah like using the full potential of like what you can do. Yeah. And I don't think doing a kite loop with two spins and a board off is your potential. Yeah. You know, I feel like when you get to a bit older and you can't take these landings yeah. that you can now, then like, yeah, it's like what, it's like what happened before. Like everyone did freestyle and then when they got kind of too old and fell off a bit, they did big air. Yeah. It's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, actually you and talked about this. I don't know if you watched it in his line club. We were talking about like the window of like when you're in kind of your best years to do like the maximum of what your body exactly. can. And he was saying like he didn't want to like focus that much on bigger now because he feels like he has more to offer in other And he other knows disciplines that still. 10 years down the line he can come back to it. Exactly. And he's the controls there. It's not going to take him that long to put his board on and off. No. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. So talking about um, big air and these different disciplines, what are, who do you think your favourite like riders are? Like who kind of inspires you to to ride within kiteboarding? Tricky one, isn't it? Like, or are you just taking bits probably the from crew we were here. Noe, Max. Yeah. Um, when I see Cockaloosa do something mad freestyle, yeah. like it's crazy. Um, like you and everyone who's like, I don't know, the people who I like watching are like the kind of you know who I hang out with when I go kind yeah. of like when we're on a trip or whatnot. Like in Brazil, it's like same people who we're with like those are the guys who I like yeah there isn't really anyone else who's really like gets me that excited to yeah you know to go on the water it's more looking at, uh, at other stuff but in kiting it's like you know fucking not future in it you get another sticker man I'm getting I'll no, he load him oh, up, mate. mate. Bit yeah. of Four stickers, bit of water. Yeah, I mean, add not future, we take off. <laughs> Fucking how far guys real. It's those other people on North too, they're really good. As in? I mean, that's what you say, right? Yeah, yeah. Not future, North, Mystic Riders. Red Bull. Red Bull. RB boys. The Red Bull boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we should probably put that. You didn't even put the hat on, mate. <laughs> They're probably going to fight. I'll make the... Don't worry, we'll make the thumbnail yeah, with, with the... Do it like that. Mate. That we're, looks perfect. We're good now. Is thumbnail done? Yeah, you can take it Sweet. off. <laughs> <laughs> what about kite video parts, then? You said kind of who your favourite riders are, but, like, video part-wise, like, what do you, what do you, what are you into? What do I fuck with? Have you seen some good stuff? That like, one from you in uh, Baja? The, yeah. The Mexico one? Yeah. No way, in Mexico. With the really good tune? Who was the tune by? Cobra Man? Yeah. And What's the, the video called? Tire Cobra? Supply. Tire Supply. That video. The last one. Yeah, the last one. Oh, sick. Yeah, I love that. And I love the, uh, the Turks and Caicos video. That one was epic. Yeah. Well, that was a good crew on that. That was a vibe. That was a big vibe. No one really like. No one really fuck with that. Mate. I liked it. We're in the talk days now. TikTok. Yeah. Too many tricks. Too many. Oh, there was a lot of tricks in that. Yeah. Um, what else has come out which I've liked? Well, it's like... You just kind of watch a bit of everything, The kind right? of kiting I enjoy, not Future puts out. Yeah. So it's like... All their videos I enjoy. Yeah. What about Hadlow no one else stuff? Puts... You talked about Hadlow a bit, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, his videos are epic. Yeah. Mimic This, uh, Brazil one, that's in the liked videos pile. Yeah. Uh, Cabaretti 09, that's epic. Yeah. Uh, he comes out and does a front mode 7 in straps. And I think he, was his, he, did, he did his best stuff in straps. I thought he looked sick. Um, his stuff at in Woody's in WA. Yeah. The kite loop KGBs were like massive and it's like fucking knee deep water. I mean, that's just absurd. Um, I mean, he's got a lot of videos. He's got, yeah, I've... Hadlow stuff, Yuri stuff. That Yuri Zoom C, like the, the, do you remember the series he did? Yeah. I thought some of the. Recorded or something? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the episodes in that were really good. Some of it was a bit questionable, but some of yeah. it was epic. Even Kev, Kevin put out some... Do you remember Kevin's Tarifa video? The Ben and Jerry's one? No. Do you not? We'll, 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 ben, link, we'll find it. We'll had link Ben it and Jerry's at the start. Like, I don't know if he was like getting hooked up or, or something, but it had like a big Ben and Jerry's banner at the start of the video. It was, like, was it one handle? Like, yeah, like Kevin doing like those crazy... like Sick. Yeah. That's about it, really. Uh, I mean... I can't forget the Exmouth video that came out, the hour-long production. Yeah. I totally forgot what it's called. <laughs> but it, Who made that? Uh, just one of the boys. Just one of the, just one of the blokes, mate. It's still online? Yeah, it's online. It's called... Tell me to get out. Of we, we'll link it up. Yeah, yeah, we'll link. I just want to remember the name real quick. Cause... 
Aaron Hadlow, Brazil 07, that was really good. Yeah, what's your, what's your favorite inspiration then in like other sports? Like, obviously you watch a ton of skateboarding. That's kind of a given. Like, who, who, do, you, who do you like? like? Who am I into? Who, what's, what's the, what's the uh, good stuff? I think the UK lads. Yeah. I love them. Casper Brooker, fucking Tom Knox, you know, yeah. Atlantic Drift, Barney Page, uh, his recent part in that Sour Solution video was really sick. Yeah. Uh, Deeds, Uto. I love Uto for some reason. I think he's epic. Yeah. Is um, it the style? Or? Yeah, the style. Oski, of course. Yeah. Uh, that Jimmy Wilkins is sick. Have you, yeah. The vert skater. Yeah. So epic. He's sick. Um, is he on um, a board brand now? I think he was on Black he's on Label real now. before. Really. He just got pro for real, yeah. Wow. Um, Tyshawn, Knack. Yeah. All those kind of strobeck lads. Yeah. So um, like Supreme. Yeah, exactly. That, that Blast video was epic. Yeah. Uh, outside of skating, like? Surfing. Surfing, I don't really watch much. Like it. You just watch, like doing it. I watch a lot of the stab edits that come yeah. out. I think they're, they're always good. They always have good stuff. Um, you don't like Dane? Yeah, I like Dane, obviously. <laughs> I was given, isn't it, really? Yeah, um, you can't not like Dane. Yeah, all, you know, all that shit. I'm into yeah. it. <laughs> do you, so do you like surfing? Oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Who's your favourite surfer? Uh, you don't like Dane. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, given that obviously we're talking about Dane. <laughs> um, yeah, that was Dane Reynolds for anyone yeah, at home. Yeah, Ran yeah. I mean, Reynolds. we just have to say D-Man. but Yeah, the, the D-Man. Yeah, for most it's a bit different. <laughs> um, I don't watch any wakeboarding. I watch that Trent Stucky video. What do you think of that? I thought the tricks were. Imp I thought it was impressive. Well, yeah, I thought it was cool. It yeah. Was cool. I wouldn't try any of the stuff, but it's pretty cool. I heard you like parkour too. Love parkour. Yeah. Big into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not as into parkour as no. people think. Not really into it, are you? It's not really me, no. mate. No, if I'm being brutally honest, though. legs aren't in. Legs just aren't up for it, are they? Legs will fucking top out, <laughs> mate. You know, I need a good safety roll on me, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, what do you do if you're not kiteboarding? Or standing sideways? That's a good question. Uh, my hobbies or like just like what do I do yeah, day like, to day? Like, yeah, what are you into? Water, like, what's going on? Uh, I, work, like, I work in the shop a bit. Edge water sports, come buy your paddle boards, your buckets and spades. Your wetsuits, whatever you fancy, mate. Some yeah. Oh, wings, yeah. You can come in there, right? It's funny. It's a real weird kind of atmosphere because some guy can be spending five and a half grand on a new wing, foil, board fucking setup. Yeah. And then you can have someone come in and they're like, their little skimpy shorts just get in the bucket and spade and it'll feel like £2.50. <laughs> it's like the weirdest atmosphere. And there's two tills and it's like one guy's spending fucking five grand and the other's like two good 50 on a bucket and spade. Sick though. Um, so you're working in the shop. Buy clothes, like. You're into fashion. Yeah, well, I get. Sounds like, sounds like wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I fucking, I actually love it. Like. No, yeah. Yeah, I think it's epic. Yeah. Um, go to the pub, like. Yeah. Just hang, just hang. Bit of banter home. with the boys. Yeah, just exactly. Yeah. Just, you know, I love, you know, seeing new places, going places, like doing shit you haven't done before. Yeah. You know, sick, isn't it? Got, got that on the, on the Tinder? Is that what the... Oh, yeah. Just, just love... Like, nah, it's more hinge, mate. Prompts. Yeah? Live, laugh, life, live. Live, real, laugh, life. Real down to the point. Yeah, exactly. Dot point. Yeah, like we do a... We go to the pub and like record our hinge voice notes to, <laughs> yeah, you know, why you should date Tom. Well, I think that pretty much... I think that kind of sums it up, mate. We're, we're basically at the end here. Is there anything else you want to tell us about? What What are you doing next? Like, what's what's the what's in the what's in the plans for Tom in the, in the coming future? Uh, coming home. Just I want just fucking do this video, not future video. Yeah. Sometime next year, it's gonna be out. Is it? It's gonna blow their fucking heads off. 
All right. Bye. I guess we have to do it now then. Which, I mean, it's happening, isn't it? I guess. I hope so, we yeah. Start filming it. We, we need some We best go get some wind. Yeah. Oof. But no, I mean... Yeah, just more, got more of the it. same then, mate. Just Someone's got to do it, don't they? Filming and kiting. Filming and kiting. Having a good time, a few bands with the boys. Having a great time. I mean, you're just fucking 21, mate. <laughs> what else am I going to do? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Go Olympics later. Thank you, sir. Thanks. See you next time. Yeah, you certainly will. <laughs> <laughs>